Have you ever heard someone say that most real estate agents fail because the top producers get all the business, they do all the deals, they get all the listings, and there's nothing left for all the other agents, right? Have you ever heard that? It's so far from the truth, it's not even funny. And to take it a step further, I want you to think about this. Is that number one agent in your market, are they working more hours than you? Are they working harder than you? I, I want you, this, this is something to really think about because in my mind, like if you're a newer agent and you really want this and you're out there grinding your face off, I submit to you that you are actually working harder in the grind category. You're working harder in the grind category and probably more than likely there's a 99% chance you're putting in more hours than the number one agent in your market. And so this is something to really dig into. I'm going to dig into all this in this video and I'm going to help reprogram you because we're taught our entire lives subliminally, subconsciously. We are taught that when something is taken, there's that is not, there's not, that's taking something away from everyone else. W mainstream. Most people think this way. It's called scarcity. It's called scarcity. And it's, just so far out in left field, it's not even close to reality. Now, when you think about reality and you think about these two scenarios of scarcity, right? Somebody takes a listing, then that's one less listing for me. And you think about abundance. Somebody takes a listing, but it opens up so many doors and so much opportunity for me. Okay. That's the same scenario with two completely different perspectives. OK, and what I want you to realize when I say this is that there's always two perspectives, a positive, a, a negative perspective and a positive perspective to every single situation. I don't care what it is. And if you think about two sides, nothing is not. <laughs> Everything has two sides, right? There's two sides to a door. There's two sides to a car. There's two sides to a penny. There's two sides to everything. Why? Because it cannot exist without two sides. The same thing with perspectives. And when you think about something negative, it makes you feel sad. If you think about something positive, it makes, makes you feel energized. It makes you feel happy. And this is where we want to be. We want to look at the positive perspective of every situation. But not only that, it's not, it's not just for, oh, we just want to feel good and, and whatever. No, we want to take it to continue to expand. We want to turn every situation into an even bigger situation, whether we win that situation or not. We want to turn it into a better opportunity to expand our influence in the market. We want to use that as an opportunity because it is a massive opportunity. We're looking at it wrong. We're looking at it from the wrong angle. And when we look at things from the wrong angle, we tend to go down this path where we continue to lie to ourselves on the next situation, on the next situation, next situation. And we get into this downward spiral and we start to feel like this just isn't for us or it's not going to work or we're just failing. We're not going to succeed. When in fact, if you would have looked at it from the right, this is why a lot of agents fail. They look at the wrong perspective of it because they were never taught this because this is what we're taught. You know, this is what this is the way that we're brought up to think scarcity. And when you think abundance, then it opens up so many doors for you and you can just keep going and you realize how unlimited it is. There was actually, there's actually a big uh, tech company owner, real estate tech company. I wouldn't call him an influencer, but I, 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 I commented on one of his posts and I was like, I, basically, it's this tech company that sells uh, areas, you know, like Zillow does. They sell zip codes, right? And he mentioned something about an area being open or something like this is years and years and years and years ago. He mentioned something about an area being open, but it stuck with me, uh, an area being open and, you know, acting like, oh, you got to hurry up and get this, you know, before it's gone or whatever. I was like, business is unlimited for every agent forever, all day long. You can't get to every single deal in every scenario, right? You're, you're the, the, the way you should look at this is not result driven. It should be input driven, right? How many seeds can I sow? How many people can I talk to and build relationships and see what I could do to help them now and later? How many deals can I stack into my 20, 30 year career, right? Every prospect I talk to is worth what? 10, 20, 30, 40, even a hundred deals over the next 20 years through repeats, referrals and referrals, of referrals, of referrals, of referrals. Like it's a huge spider web and you have no idea the size of the ripples 
if you get out there and get moving and really build this thing up, the problem is you're building it too slow. And so you're not getting the results fast enough because you don't think it's working. So you don't do it as fast because you don't want to commit because it's not working that great and you can't see the results. So you do it slower because you don't want to fully commit because why are we going to waste our time with something that's not working when the whole time it's working? If you'll just go all in, see, this is the problem right here. It's just this cycle that we just put ourselves in over and over and over again when we lie to ourselves. We lie to ourselves, and it's just continued to be a down spiral until we're out of the business. And I told this tech uh, company owner, you know, I commented my theory here about business being unlimited. This is a long time ago. And he's like, oh, yeah, sounds great. You know, it sounds good for a T-shirt <laughs> to put on a T-shirt, but far from reality, Ricky. And woo, I was just I didn't say anything. I didn't respond back. I didn't get into this back and forth, but I was thinking, wow. This person is not either he doesn't understand how this world actually works or he's just so engulfed in his own agenda to sell areas of his tech company. He wants everybody to feel like there's so much scarcity that you got to buy into this area or you'll just be left out and you just won't get any leads. It's it's insane. Uh, but the fact is that this is the facts. And these are the principles that will never change in the business. I don't care what happens. You know, you shouldn't be worried about NAR, Zillow, your brokerage, what other agents are doing. None of that even affects your business at all. Matter of fact, I want to do a video on this. Like the whole NAR and uh, brokerage is selling out and all this stuff, that should be private information. They shouldn't even have that on headlines. They should just have that behind closed doors where nobody can see what's going on. That way we can focus. See, it's, it's distracting you from doing things that actually move the needle for you. Anything that takes away from actions that move the needle in your life is a huge distraction. And you need to eliminate it. Eliminate it. You know, I don't pay attention to it. I watch the market trends and prices and stuff like that. And I can't help. But to see the headlines that pop up and I'm like, OK, well, NAR settled and real settled and this is happening and that is happening. I can't help but to see it because why? They throw it in your face constantly. Why? Because they're making money on clicks. It's wild. Ricky, you're making money on clicks. I'm not doing this for clicks. Just for just so you're, for your information. I'm not creating this video for clicks. If I did, I would create an entertainment video, okay, that gets millions of views. This little video about how to build a real estate business for real estate agents is going to get a couple thousand views. It ain't nothing compared to what some of these channels get, right? I'm not doing this for clicks. I don't make much on YouTube ad revenue. I'm doing this to serve people. And that's the way you need to look at your business and you need to understand the principles of the business so that you can progress in your business. And that's why I'm doing this video for you to help you understand the abundancy, the abundancy of real estate for real estate agents and anybody in real estate or any business, period, the abundancy. Now, let's take a scenario. All right. I had an agent call me. And he didn't call, he texted, he texted and he said, basically in so many words, I don't have the word for it. It was a long text. This guy was really upset. He was really down about this. In essence, he lost a listing. It was a $4 million listing. It was in a subdivision. He sold a lot of homes in his wife even put the name of the subdivision on his birthday cake. Cause he sold so many there, blah, blah, blah. These are big high end homes, 4 million, whatever. And he lost the listing there. He'd been talking to the owner for two years. Um, he'd been talking to the husband for two years, the wife for a year. He thought he was a shoe in for this listing and he lost it. So he's like, I don't have any advice for me, but I'm just down. I just need some energy. I need some advice. So I called him and I said, Hey, what, what's up, man? Like you've been following me for a while. You understand my principles and concepts around losing listings and all this stuff. Like, what's the deal? He's really down about it. And I went through all the just regular stuff. I went through all the stuff you guys have heard me say, you know, like how are you going to lose something that wasn't yours? I went through the, you know, what you, you learn something, right? And you're slowly molding yourself to get better and better, and better. By the way, I don't do listing appointments to get listings. I do them to get better at listing appointments. If I get the listing, great. But my objective is, is to get better at communicating with property owners. How, how, what do you do? How, how do you, how do you, how do you communicate to property owners, right? 
sales one-on-one for me, right? A lot of people say, ask the right questions. You get the right answer. Ask better questions. I like that. I like that. But what Ricky Carruth says is ask enough of the right questions. Enough of the problem is you guys aren't asking enough questions. You're stopping like two questions in. And I'm like going six, seven, eight, nine, ten questions deep. I'm really understanding what's going on. And when I ask the question, I'm at that point waiting for an answer. I don't get nervous if they don't start talking right away and start trying to fill up the conversation with nonsense talk. I'm patient. I listen. I want to know what's going on. Nevertheless, let's back up. I was going through all the normal stuff, right? You get future time back. You don't have to spend on that listing. You can now take that future time and go get procure five more deals. Um, the, you can call all the owners, you know, in, in the subdivision and tell them about the listing. And he said, he, 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 you know, he was kind of paused. He said, I hear you. And he kind of sounded very sad still at that point. You kind of sound like Eeyore, like I hear you. And I said, okay. I said, okay, you still don't get, you're still not like, you're still not clicking for you. I said, all right, well, look, here's what you do. You've got a window of opportunity right now. A window of opportunity right now between the moment that that seller signs a listing with that agent and it actually hits MLS. What's that window of opportunity? Like three days, a week, two weeks, depending on how quick you can get the pictures, like what the process is. Sometimes it's quicker, whatever. Two two days to a week, something like that, if, it, if it's getting signed today. Um, I said, you're sitting here sulking while this property is not on the market yet when you could actually Call the, all the owners before it hits the market and say, hey, I've, I know of a house coming on right in the subdivision. I know of a house coming on. I can't tell you which one yet because it's not official, but I know of it. I have inside information that it is coming. Um, I know the agent. Da, 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 da. Um, if you want to head start on it, if you want to be ready when this thing hits, if you know somebody, if you've got a friend, if you've got somebody that wants to be in the subdivision, like Come to me. Let me know. Let's get a game plan together. I'll even call the agent and kind of get all the ducks in a row where we can be the first in there. Maybe even hit a get an offer in before it even hits the market. Now, right there, what I did was is he, he has a subdivision where he's made a lot of impact already. Sold a lot of homes, knows a lot of people. What if he calls people with this in there that already know him, know of him, whatever? Look at the value he just provided. He's giving incredible, timely timely inside market information they can't get anywhere else and even if he doesn't sell the property look at the value look at the relationship building that he did with that opportunity not to mention that he might actually sell the house um that's that's a strong possibility as well especially in this market with low inventory and people trying to get in certain subdivisions and i'm sure a four million dollar subdivision i'm sure those houses are hard to come by who knows i don't know the market down there i'm just throwing out scenarios but look at the value you're giving them. But if you take that two to five, two to five days or whatever it takes for it to hit the market and you sulk about losing the deal, then you let that opportunity slip through because why? You were looking at this from the wrong perspective. Remember, two sides. There's two perspectives here. He sat about it enough to text me and think about it and just sit there and, and, and on the phone sounding sad. Or there's a perspective of, oh, like a listing's coming. I could go find a buyer. This gives me an opportunity to find a buyer. This gives me an opportunity to let people in the subdivision know. And if I haven't talked to the people before, this is a great relationship starter. If I've talked to them before, this is a great relationship builder and nurture situation. There's so many positives here that you can spread this out. You can even call other subdivisions, smaller subdivisions. You, you could call limitless smaller subdivisions within a one, two, three, four, five, ten mile radius. And say, hey, I know of a listing coming up. It's in this $4 million area. Are you looking to be in a $4 million area? Because I could get you in there. I have a strong, I have inside connection for you. It's unlimited. You can't call all the people that's available to call about this and use it as a leverage point to continue building your business. Then you could call. You can never call them all. Never going to happen. It's unlimited, right? And so when I say limitless, what I'm talking about is the fact that you can't get to all the people and create, nurture all the relationships. You'll never, you'll never do it all. Therefore, you have job security forever. I think about this business in terms of relationships created and nurtured, not deals closed, 
the deals close, like every relationship I put in place turns into 10 to 20 deals to me over the life of my career, right? I, I don't think of it in terms of deals. I think of how big is my influence in the market and how many of these people actually like me enough to do business. So we continue talking. And when I said that to him, it clicked. He was like, oh, okay. Wow. I never thought of that. That dude, he, he like, you could tell he was stopped in his tracks and his whole tone changed. And he was like, okay, I get it. I, that is an amazing, I'm going to do that right now. Then he went on to tell me, he said, Ricky, I don't even know how I was even in the conversation with this because I was up against the number one agent in the market. I said, oh, really? I said, look at there, dude. Like you're already starting to spot the positives from this. He says, man, I'm ha I was happy to even be there. And now, like, I didn't ask him that. This is all coming out of him now that he's realized the opportunity. And he start now he's starting to think about the positives of the experience instead of the negatives. And remember, when we think about the negatives of an experience, it makes us sad. When we think about the positives, it makes us happy and energized and, and wanting to take action and execute. And he said, but you know what? That number one agent didn't even get the listing. <laughs> I said, okay. He said this other agent did, okay, that doesn't sell hardly as much as the number one agent. And they got it because the wife liked her. And I said, bro, listen to what you're saying. Listen to what you're saying. Like, at the end of the day, like, why do you think that they picked that agent? I'll tell you why. Because they liked her the most. They liked her the most, right? That's how you're gonna. That's how you're gonna win it every single time. Is who do they like the most? It don't. It don't matter about stats. You guys think it matters what your brokerage sold or what who your brokerage is or what the market share is or what team you're on or what your presentation looks like or how many views you get or or how you're gonna advertise. They don't care. They care about two things. Okay, people at the end of the day care about two things. They care about, do they like you, number one? That's the first thing they care about. If they don't like you, nothing's going to happen. If they like you more than the next person, obviously it worked on this because this agent, right, the guy that's number one probably had the best presentation, probably like the probably had the, definitely had the most sales, but he didn't win it. Why did he win it? Because they liked the other girl more. Now, this is part of it too. This is the second thing. They only care about their problems their problems they don't care about you and all this all your stuff what you're gonna do and how you're gonna do it they don't care about all that what they care about all, the only reason they would care about how you're gonna do something or what you're gonna do is how it pertains to you solving their problem for them which is wrapped up in this property somehow like why are they selling this property what's the driving factor here in their life that's causing them to make the decision to want to sell this property. Okay. That's what they care about their problem. And it, do they like you? That's number one and number two, right? Everything else is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And until you understand that, you're going to lose listings to people who are more personable, who ask enough better questions, who go deeper with what's going on and so on and so forth. I never did a listing presentation. I'm not saying don't do a listing presentation. I'm just saying I focused on them. I didn't have a presentation to show them about me because I know they didn't care about me. That's just real talk. I know that they didn't care about me, so I didn't show up to tell them about me. I showed up to learn about them. I showed up to ask a ton of questions about them. I showed up to understand what problems they are going through. And then I helped them understand what I could do to help them solve those problems. Never had a presentation. I had comps. I had a listing agreement. I had a restaurant gift card. I had it all in a nice folder. Ricky Carruth pin. That's all I took to every listing appointment. Every single one of them. And guess what? I won most of them. I want my track record on when I went to a listing point, even when I'm even when I was up against other agents, they're 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 interviewing three agents. I won a lot of those. I lost some. Absolutely. You lose you win some, you lose, nobody bats hundred percent. 
Somebody commented on my Instagram the other day. You know, I'm not, I get 100% of my <laughs> listing appointments. Yeah, right. That's a bull faced lie. You ain't never going to get 100% of nothing. And it's okay. That's what makes the world go around. And this, this comes back to this uh, idea and principle of abundance is that there's enough, right, for everyone to have more than enough and still be more than enough left over. Ooh, that's the thing. Um, you can't get to it all. And when somebody else wins, don't count it as a loss for you. That's a win for you too. That's, a win. that's what I'm trying to tell you. They get a listing. You get to A, sell it. You can leverage that listing to go get more listings, even though it isn't your listing. You can use it as a conversation starter. When I talk to a prospect, I'm not trying to get them to buy or sell. I'm trying to use whatever property I'm calling about, whether it's a property I'm presenting to them or a property that they own, whatever. I'm using it as a excuse to get to know them, right? And understand my, my, my fellow human and what it is they trying to do and why so I can help them do it. And that's how I do real estate. <coughs> so anyway. Uh, I hope you got a lot out of this video. I'm going to start um, being a lot more consistent on YouTube. I'm going to map out uh, certain days at certain times. I'm going to post at the same times on the same days every week. I'm still mapping out exactly how that's going to work. Uh, as you can see behind me, I got a vibe board. So I'm going to start drawing y'all some pictures and uh, helping you guys understand things a lot better. So a lot of great things coming and I appreciate you so much. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Let's go.